Hello everyone and welcome back. In the last session, we understood the left and the right recursion. Basically, we observed the languages that are generated from left and right recursive grammars. In this session, we will observe the problems associated to left recursion and then we will observe the solution to it with respect to the context-free grammars. So, without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today, we will first observe the problem caused by left recursion. Then we will see the solution provided by the right recursion. Finally, we will learn the procedure of conversion of left recursion to right recursion. Now, during the previous session, we observed that a generic left recursive grammar is of the form A can be rewritten as A alpha or beta. Since the non-terminal A is reoccurring as the leftmost non-terminal symbol in the right-hand side, this is a left recursive grammar. Now, using this left recursive grammar, we can have derivation trees as this one, right? So, basically, using this grammar from A, we can derive beta followed by alpha star. This is basically the language generated by the left recursive grammar. Now, this much we already have seen during the previous session. Let me illustrate the problem with this derivation. Now, you probably have heard about recursion in terms of programming languages. Basically, when a function calls itself, we call it a recursive function. Now, if we want to express this grammar in terms of codes, it will be something like this. Suppose the non terminal A is a function. And the function body is defined like this. Since A can be rewritten as A alpha, so we can state that the function A within its definition body at first is calling itself only and then executing the statement referred by this alpha. Now, since A is calling itself, so clearly it is a recursive function. Now, think about it. Whenever this function is executed within its body, every time it will first call itself. Thereafter, this function during its execution will also call the same function A which will be inside the called function's body. Now, since the first thing the function is doing every time is recursively calling itself only without performing any checking that whether the recursive call is even required or not, this structure may lead to an infinite loop and the execution may get stuck in that. But that's not the case for right recursion. Let me illustrate. Now, we already know that in case of right recursion, the generic right recursive grammar is of this form and using this grammar, this is the language that we generate. Observe, here it is alpha star beta, which in case of left recursion was beta alpha star. Now, let's try to implement this production rule in terms of pseudocodes. So, here also we will be defining the function A. Follow the production rule, A can be rewritten as alpha followed by A. So, here within the function body, we will first state alpha and then the function A will be called recursively. Now, here with the help of this alpha, we can eliminate the possibility of an infinite loop. We can modify this alpha as a means of checking whether this recursive call is required or not. Now, honestly, we observed this analogy to understand the top-down evaluation of left and right recursive grammars. Now, there are two types of parsers, top-down and bottom-up. We will learn about them in details in the upcoming chapters. Now, left recursive grammars, since they have the possibility of getting into infinite loop, so it confuses the top-down parsers. So, we need to convert the left recursive production into right recursive ones as because in case of right recursive productions, we have the ability to avoid the possibility of falling into an infinite loop. Let's now observe how we can convert a left recursive grammar into its equivalent right recursive form. Now, remember, we are only changing the format. The derived language that is beta alpha star should still be achieved with the newly formed right recursive version. 
because if it is not, then the entire conversion procedure will be pointless. So let's begin. Since we want to derive beta alpha star, so the production rule should be like this. A can be rewritten as beta followed by a new non-terminal A prime. So from the start symbol A, beta can be derived. Now A prime should be phrased in such a way that it should have the ability to derive alpha star. That is, any number of alphas or an empty string. So A prime can be rewritten as alpha A prime or epsilon. Observe here, A prime is reoccurring as the rightmost non-terminal making it a right recursive production. Let's now check whether we can derive this language with this modified set of production rules. So if we want to derive beta only, that is the string with only one constant from the start symbol A, we will derive beta and A prime using this production rule A can be rewritten as beta A prime. Thereafter, from A prime, we can derive epsilon using the production rule A prime can be rewritten as epsilon. Observe the yield, it is beta epsilon, so basically beta. Then again from the start symbol A, at first, we can derive beta A prime. Thereafter using the rule A prime can be written as alpha A prime, we can derive any number of alpha A prime. And the derivation can be stopped if we derive epsilon from the A prime. Observe the yield, beta followed by any number of alphas. So with this converted set of grammar, we are still deriving the same language that is beta followed by alpha star. And since it is now right recursive, the top down evaluation of this would not confuse the top down parsers anymore. So in this session, we learned the problem due to left recursion. Basically during the top down evaluation, there remains high chances of falling into an infinite loop. Then we saw the solution provided by the right recursion. Finally, we learned the conversion of left recursion to right recursion. Alright people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we will observe some solved problems on elimination of left recursion. With the help of that, we will acquire better understanding of the left to right recursion conversion procedure. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.